Hey, hey, welcome. Uh, this is Connecting with Code, the camp for 2023. Uh, I'm Dave Fisher. And I'm Bob Schaefer. <laughs> uh, and we thought we would uh, do some coding with you. Uh, before we get started today, we wanted to talk about uh, the history of the camp a little bit, uh, let you know our theme, some for this year, things like that. Uh, so Connecting with Code is a project that we've been doing for, I don't know, six or seven years, maybe. Uh, we've been doing it uh, at Rolls-Holman. It's just like a face-to-face -face camp for the first couple of years. Uh, and then when COVID hit, we started doing it as, a, as an online thing. Um, and once the online thing started, uh, it's been not just a, a Rolls-Holman project with me, uh, but it's been with, uh, with Bob Schaefer. Uh, and I thought we'd introduce ourselves some. Uh, so obviously I teach at Rolls-Holman. I'm a computer scientist here at Rolls-Holman and I, I love to do outreach programs like this. Uh, and I'll let Bob introduce himself. Yeah, uh, as they said, Bob Schaefer, I actually teach on the other side of the country. I'm in California. I teach my full-time job is at Mission College. I run the engineering and mechatronics departments there. I also teach at Santa Clara University and uh, I moonlight uh, at a nonprofit that I started about 10 years ago where I work with first-generation college students who get trained to be uh, STEM tutors, and then they provide free tutoring through uh, for middle and high school students, and then they earn a scholarship for the time of the program. So one of the things that really excited me about being involved with this project is the outreach. Uh, the fact that this was a set of videos that could be made for free and, and watched by anyone in the country or world for that matter. Um, so as Dave said, when the pandemic hit and they moved to an online modality, it was a perfect opportunity for me to uh, not only hang out with my friend Dave, but also help produce some videos and help with the behind the scenes for uh, what is hopefully a great education experience for everybody that watches. Yeah, so every year we uh, we make a number of videos where we use the Scratch programming language. Many of you have uh, heard of or, or tried Scratch already. And then we also do some similar things in Python. Uh, specifically, this video uh, is for the Scratch one. Uh, and every year we've got a theme, and, and Bob's going to tell you about our, our theme for our projects uh, for this year. Yeah, this year we thought it'd be fun to link the projects that we're doing to world improvement uh, in the form of sustainability. Uh, depending on, on who you are, you've probably heard of the word sustainability. If you're like me, when you hear sustainability, you think a lot about nature, environment, energy. Uh, these are all related to one uh, dimension of sustainability. In fact, if you look at the left of this slide, you'll see what's called a sustainability compass. Uh, and they've cleverly used the same uh, letters that you would find in a compass for north, south, east, and west, but they've mapped them to different words that are focuses for sustainability. Nature, society, economy, and well-being. And if you look on the right-hand side of the slide, you'll see the list of 17 goals that the United Nations have come up with as sustainable development goals for world improvement. Uh, you can read through all of these, but the one we're gonna be focusing on today is sustainable cities and communities. We're gonna be building a house in our code and uh, the red boxes around numbers 12, 14, and 15 indicate the other projects that we're gonna be working on throughout this week. Cool, and so Bob uh, Bob mentioned there, so today is, is building, so we're building a house, number one here. Uh, and then our next project is going to be about recycling. Uh, and then a project below the water is going to be uh, cleaning the ocean, saving the fish. Uh, and then uh, on land about uh, butterfly growth population. So we like to have themes. Themes make things fun. Uh, but of course, uh, themes are, are more for us. I think what you guys are most interested in is, uh, is learning to code. Uh, so what I thought I would do is I'd start off just by showing the solution uh, to what we're trying to build today. Uh, so we're trying to learn how to build houses, right? Um, and we've got these slides. Now you can see the slides with us if you want, uh, but you can actually just kind of watch this part and just see what's going on. Uh, but we're making a project uh, called Build a House. And I know you won't be able to see my fingers, but when I press certain keys, it's gonna run certain pieces of code. Uh, so like if I press the R key, it's gonna prepare my pen for red. And if I press the number one, uh, you can see that it gave me a red uh, little chimney uh, of the house there. Uh, if I press uh, G2, uh, uh, it'll give me a uh, box, kind of like a, a house box here. Uh, I'm still in green, so I don't need to press anything else. But if I press 3, it uh, will be a roof. Uh, I think I'll switch it over to blue. 
uh, Allen Press 4, uh, for door, uh, that kind of rhymes. Uh, and then five, I believe, is going to be a window. Uh, and then I'll bring it back into the red color for the final one, number six, which is a little doorknob. Um, and so the idea of this project is obviously we're, we're building, so it's, uh, it's connected to sustainability. Uh, but it's to um, build something up in small pieces. So, for example, we're going to build like the chimney just like perfectly together, right? Um, and then we're going to build the box, you know, almost exclusively together. And then after that, we want you to try to like do some things on your own. Uh, and then we'll show you how and then try to do some things on your own and show you how. Uh, and the idea is, is that when you're done, you'll you'll have this little project uh, to build a house. And by the way, you can hit space uh, to erase. Uh, and then you can just go through and you can build your house uh, into whatever colors you want. Uh, and so that's kind of the idea of what we're going for. Bob, everybody know what we're trying to build? I think so. You know, one of the things <laughs> I'll point out, if you can hit six or five again, you'll notice uh, in a different color. Uh, as these things are being drawn, there was a specific shape that it was kind of going around. There was, uh, if, you, if you slowed down the video or if we had increased the spacing as it was drawing, you would actually see this is getting drawn. So one thing I want you to think about as uh, Dave and I are describing the code is the math that has to be involved with making sure that we're going about the right shapes. Um, we're going to do a lot of that math for you, um, but if you are so inclined and want to try to pause the video and think ahead to how these shapes are made, um, that might be an interesting challenge for you as well. Cool. Um, and so for this particular project, what we're going to do is we're going to give you some starting code. Now, starting code is good and bad. Uh, it's good because there's some things you won't have to make, uh, but it's bad because you've actually got to like take the time to figure out uh, what starting code we're giving you. Um, and so there's a link in the slides uh, to the starting code. Uh, here's here's all the different things we're going to learn about. Uh, you can uh, for people that care about uh, learning objectives, those are our learning objectives. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the starting code, but because I don't want to lose anybody. Um, I need to back up just a little bit. I got to remind myself to this. And there's a lot of people that aren't familiar with Scratch. Um, and so let's uh, let's talk about Scratch. Uh, so Scratch is a website, uh, scratch.mit.edu. Uh, so if you've never been there before, go to Scratch right now. Uh, and then one of the things that you'll want to do on Scratch is it'll say, um, uh, sign in or join. Um, and if you've got an account, sign into it because you're going to need to be signed into account. If you don't, just click on the join button. They've got a really easy flow for getting signed up. And what I wanted to do uh, just first, just really briefly, is just click on the create button on Scratch and just describe um, what the environment is here uh, that you're looking at. And so uh, where I'm going to put Bob and I, we're in the coding section uh, right now, uh, but there's different pieces to the Scratch environment. So uh, Bob and I, are, right now, we're going to hang out over on the stage. This area is the stage. This is where your code's going to run at. Uh, down in this area uh, at the bottom, this is where your uh, actors are at. In computer science, we don't call them actors. Uh, they're, they've got code. They've got an image. They're called sprites uh, is the fancy term we use. You can see that there's kind of like one actor uh, in this play right now. Uh, and then where we're at over here is we're in the, the code area again, which is where we started. Um, so let's go ahead and add some code. So Scratch is a programming language, just like any programming language. You maybe have heard of like Python or, or JavaScript. There's so many out there. Um, but it's different in that instead of typing it, you drag and drop the blocks, right? So it's much easier for people that aren't strong typers yet. Um, and you can see that there's a lot of commands, like a ton of commands that you can uh, do here. And you are limited to these commands, so it's uh, it's limited to these. And there's so many that they try to organize it by type. Um, and these types are all color coded. Uh, so you can see that like control here is orange, so all the control ones are in orange. Uh, events is in yellow. <laughs> Bob, the yellow and orange seem pretty close. <laughs> I don't know yeah, why they seem pretty close. I don't know why they use yellow and orange. Um, but I, I can tell them apart. You know, one, one thing I'll, I'll share since uh, you passed it over anyway. Uh, you know, I want people to realize, even though this is a, a simpler version of interface, you know, Dave mentioned this was drag and drop. If you uh, look this up anywhere else, it'll be called block coding. Uh, and the difference between block coding and text coding 
is actually not as different as one might think. Even though this is a very colorful environment and has a cute cat in the as the as the sprite, and the the code is very um, younger, you know, beginner friendly. All of the concepts that are built into every one of these blocks maps to an actual typed uh, keyword or command or function or uh, you know piece of code that is used in any one of the programming languages that Dave mentioned and any programming language that you'll ever learn. So as you're going through this, whether you're uh, young, old, or in the middle, uh, this is, while colorful and bright and kid-friendly, a, a very good learning environment for anyone that is looking to learn more about the world of programming. Programming, after all, is really just trying to get a computer, which is in itself a very complex device, uh, to do things for you. And uh, this is a, a great learning tool and an avenue to do that. So Cool. Thanks, Bob. That's totally true. Totally agree. Hey, let's add just a little bit of code, and then we'll, uh, we'll actually start in with the thing today. Um, Follow along with me and go ahead and do this. So click on events. And uh, typically your program starts with some event that happens. I'm gonna zoom in on here just so you can see it. The event that's most popular is the when green flag clicked event. You can see there's a little green flag up here. And so the idea is, is that whenever you click that flag, the code that's connected to this is gonna run. Uh, so let's just go ahead and really quickly, let's click on motion. Uh, and move 10 steps. And so if I click the green flag, uh, you can see that it uh, is an event and it causes that code to run. Uh, and so I click on it and he moves. Now this is probably the world's most boring program. Uh, you click it and he moves 10, right? If you click it uh, enough times, you'll have to drag your cat back over and, and click him some more. The thing about this- I'll just jump in really quick, yeah, sorry. Uh, you know, one of the things that might've been hard to notice is Dave was pushing that. Each time you clicked it, that was 10 steps. It looked like just one step, but 10 really, really small steps. So if he increased that to 20, for example, uh, and then clicked it again, you'll see, or maybe 40 or something that's dramatic, as he, uh, as he pushes that green button, an instantaneous jump will happen with every step. It's just bigger. So uh, the, the steps does not mean you're going to watch 40 individual steps. It's more of a size of the step. Um, just in case that might have been a misleading uh, way that Scratch labels that. Cool, thanks, Bob. Um, and then other things we could do is we could make, uh, whoa, that was not what I meant to do. Or uh, <laughs> that just jumped to the end of the screen. Um, another thing that I meant to do is just kind of show you how you change your code. So um, in Scratch, what you do is you grab something and it moves that block and all the ones that are beneath it. So if you ever want to take your code like apart, sometimes you've got to get good at doing that. Let's go ahead and uh, change it here. Let's put a forever loop in here. Uh, sorry, forever was in the control area. So click on the control area, grab the one labeled forever uh, and stick it right on there. And then take your move 10 and stick it back in there. Now, if I were to run this program, uh, what it would do is it would tell the cat to forever uh, go 10 steps. Uh, and you can see that eventually he hits the wall uh, and I have to grab him by the tail and kind of bring him back over here. Uh, now, one thing I want to mention about Scratch is you can tell that the program is running uh, in a couple of different ways. Uh, Bob, what are some ways you can tell the program's running? Well, if you're looking at the display screen, you'll see the cat moving. Yeah, uh, another moving. thing you'll see is that um, if uh, Dave can click stop for me, the little hexagon there, you'll notice that when the program's not running, that hexagon, that red stop sign shaped is kind of grayed out. And when he's running it, it's ready to be pressed. And so if you look up there and see that you can actively stop the program, that means even if you don't see motion in the field, um, it still thinks it's running. It's trying to move 10 steps, but as you can see, the cat has hit the wall and there's nowhere else to move. But that red stop sign there is still uh, clickable. And, and so that indicates that your code is actually going. Cool. Uh, and then the last one, if you noticed it, is uh, it outlines it in yellow, right? So always good to uh, to know when your code is running. And usually you only change your code when you stop running it, right? But I just kind of wanted to point out uh, uh, that you've got running code uh, and not running code. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do on this, just kind of for fun, uh, just add one more command. If you go back to the motion area, uh, if you scroll down in motion, you can see that there's actually you know more commands than even fit on the screen. 
Um, find this one that says if on edge bounce and stick it in there. Uh, and now if you run it, you can see that he bounces and he goes back and forth. And yes, he does come back upside down, but we're not going to go into that because that's a rabbit hole we don't want to talk about. All right, so uh, uh, this... What, one other thing before we leave this, if you don't mind. Uh, what if someone's writing code and then they decide, oh gosh, I put something in there I don't want. What can they do then? Yeah, so if you put in this like if on edge bounce and you don't like it, what you can do is you can drag it out and you can set it here. It won't be part of the running code. Or you can just drag it kind of like back over here and drop it and then it's just like gone. And so that's kind of like the trash can. But I did want that, so I'm gonna put it back. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can uh, actually save your work, uh, which is good in programming. Uh, and so this one I'm just gonna call basic cat. Um, and every time you save your work, it actually gets saved. Uh, if you're on the website, uh, scratch.mit.edu, uh, it'll actually save it up to the cloud. By the way, some Chromebooks, uh, their schools have uh, regulations and they can't go to the Scratch website. If that happens to you, there's also a Scratch app that Chromebooks can install, and it works just the same, uh, except for all the files are local to your computer. Just kind of letting you know in case you do that. We have to run in that a lot um, at our, our school system. All right, so the program that we're going to make together is this build a house, and we're not going to start from scratch. We're going to start from starting code. Now, the starting code does make it more difficult. If you uh, are using that Scratch app, it's possible to get the starting code, but you have to uh, somehow get it on your computer uh, with a file. I'm going to not worry about that. Um, I'm going to click on this link, starting code. You'll be able to uh, find this link um, in uh, the, the YouTube video. We'll put it down below. It's also in the slide deck. And what this is, is this is going to be some starting code that we're going to give you. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to this website. You can also just type it. It's not that hard to type. Scratch.mit.edu uh, slash projects. And then you can see that crazy number there. Um, if you were to go to this website and you're signed in, then there should be a remix button. And all you need to do is you need to click this big green remix button. Great. And so now you have uh, the starting code uh, that we're intentionally giving you. Uh, and you can see uh, what's in it. Now, uh, you can see that there's not much here. Uh, there's a little bit of code. Uh, there's one sprite, and the backdrop looks like this grid thing, right? Um, let's just kind of tour around and see what's going on. So first off, uh, your only sprite is actually hidden. Uh, you can see there's this show or hide button here. Uh, he's actually a little turtle. Uh, so for a little bit of uh, historical humor for us, uh, turtle graphics is, uh, is commonly used when you're learning to code. And so we've got a little turtle that's doing the building. Now, eventually we will hide the turtle um, and all he'll do is he'll do his markering and you won't even see him. But for now, I think I will show the turtle just to, to emphasize that there is actually a, a character that's doing this drawing for us. Now, this turtle uh, has got a little bit of code. Uh, it looks like he's got three different events that he responds to. Uh, so he responds to the N key so if I press the N key on my computer, something should happen. And what it's doing is it's, uh, if I just press it a lot really faster, it's cycling through the backdrops. Uh, and we'll talk about that. But the N key, you can see, cycles through the backdrops. Uh, I'm going to take it back to step one here. By the way, you can have to make sure you're not, uh, you don't have focus somewhere. So like, let's say I clicked into here uh, and I hit the N key. Well, it's just going to type ends, right? It's not going to do anything. It's just going to type a bunch of ends. Uh, oops, now i got to change his name back to Turtle uh, or something like that. Uh, so usually before I use the shortcut key, I usually click in this white area uh, just to make sure that nothing has the focus is what it's called. Uh, and so now I can press in and it does this. Other things... Out of curiosity, yep. uh, if, if someone were following along and accidentally doing what you just did, is Control-Z work down in that sprite area? For those uh, of you listening while Dave's checking that, Control-Z is a standard key sequence that actually undoes yep. the last thing you did. And so if you um, are in another programming environment, that might be a very helpful tool. Um, as we go th through this uh, programming environment, um, we'll, we'll see other ways that you can kind of work with those features. Yeah, un undo is important. Other things is like, let's say that I accidentally, so see this is my turtle, this is my main sprite. Let's say I accidentally click this little like trash can icon on him. Ah! <laughs> so your your options if you if you delete all of your code uh, are a couple. What one is to scream, 
<laughs> that's pretty common. The other is to very calmly click on the edit button and see if you can restore the sprite uh, and it comes right back, right? So um, if you ever accidentally delete your sprite, it's gonna happen to somebody at some point. Um, just make sure you know that you can uh, control Z to undo some things or there's that edit restore, uh, which can sometimes be useful as well. All right, so let's uh, let's kind of keep navigating around. So there's an event that happens when the green flag is clicked. Uh, it does an erase all. It's kind of weird to erase all when we haven't actually drawn anything. So the turtle's gonna do some drawing, like he's got a marker. Um, and then the space bar does the same thing. So you can use either uh, this to erase or space bar to erase. Great. Um, now the way code works is your characters can have code. You've also got this backdrop. Um, and so the backdrop is also called the stage. I'm gonna click right over here where it says backdrop stage. And if I click on, there's tabs up here. I don't know if you've seen them. The backdrop can have code. It does not have any, but it could have. Um, and then you've got these uh, different backdrops over here. So it looks like I've made seven backdrops for you. I suppose I should move our pictures. And you can see that we're gonna build this program up in stages. So like step one, corresponds to like pressing the number one button. Step two, the two button, three, the three button. And the backdrop is showing you what it is you need to make. Now it's a little confusing because the goal of step one is to get your turtle to draw what's already there. So you're you're gonna hopefully draw in a color other than purple. Um, and so you're gonna draw like a little green L shape or a little red L shape or blue or, or whatever, right? Um, and then in yeah, step I, two, you're trying I, to do box. Yeah, go ahead, Bob. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I'd relate this, you know, how maybe many of you are just a couple years shy or away from doing this when you have a kindergarten book or something where you're practicing your writing and someone gives you the dotted <laughs> things that you have to trace. We're basically creating a template for you to trace, but with code. The goal, of course, will be that once those things are stripped away, uh, you don't need those dotted lines anymore. You don't need those templates anymore. Your code will just build that house. But the challenge of this is going to be to write code that is a direct copy on top of our drawings. So the backdrops that uh, we've created for you are in fact not code themselves, they're just drawings. Uh, and then we're gonna be developing the code together to draw on top of that. And we do it step by step. Cool, yeah, I appreciate that. And then obviously, yeah, once you're done with all your code, you'll, you're gonna move on to this final backdrop, uh, which doesn't have any of those, and you're just gonna use your code. All right, so uh, lots of long speeches, let's get going already. Uh, and so if I go back to the turtle, and I, you can see here's my image of the turtle. Uh, and when I go back to the code, uh, this is where we're gonna be doing uh, all of our work. And so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, draw on this, uh, this chimney up here. I consider the solution, but I think you know what it is. And to do that, we're gonna be using a set of blocks that you may not have seen before when you've used Scratch called this pen uh, blocks. And so there's actually more commands than the default. And the, the way we put this on here is, you notice this little blue square down here? Click on it really quick, just so we can show you where we got it from. There's what's called extensions uh, in Scratch. And you can see that there's a lot of different extensions that you can add. And the one that we've added for you here is called the pen uh, extension. And so draw with your sprites, that's what we're using. By the way, some of these others are fun. So music, pen, video sensing, that's crazy. Text to speech, translate. Um, and then like Lego Mindstorms and yeah, lots of Lego things, right? Uh, we've already added this pen library, so you don't need data. I just wanted to point out where these blocks uh, came from. So let's go ahead. Yeah, one of the neat things that uh, you'll hear, you just heard Dave use the word uh, pen library. Uh, you know, with Scratch, they call it an extension, but this is very common in other programming languages as well. As I said, this is a beginner and a, a way to get introduced to programming. But programming has developed so much over the last 40 years that people don't like rewriting code that's already been written. And so libraries exist to kind of give you a head start, and they exist in all programming languages. And so what you can do in many programming languages is include a library into your code, and then it gives you all this functionality, all these different ways of doing things uh, that you didn't have to then write yourself. So pen is like that. If you go into create, like Dave did at the beginning, and, and start from a blank slate, uh, you won't have that pen feature, but you can add that library, which gives you uh, many more opportunities to, to interact with your screen. Now, I, I will also remind, I don't know if this was uh, mentioned earlier, and if it was, it's worth repeating. Uh, we encourage you to pause throughout this video. Uh, 
Um, we're going to be going through the solution, but we really want you to take whatever time you need to absorb what's being said, think about what's being said, copy what's being done, uh, rewind if you need to. Um, of course, if you are watching this so that you can present this, maybe you want to go back and hear a certain detail, or maybe most of this is review for you, you can watch it at any pace you want. But um, please don't be afraid to, to pause and wait. Uh, people go through these at, at very different paces. Cool. Thanks, Bob. All right. So the first thing we want to do uh, for this turtle is we want to draw this when the number one key is pressed. So the first thing that we've got to find is we've got to find the event uh, that's going to do that. And so the event that we actually want is when space key pressed. Now I know that uh, space key is not the one we want, but you'll get used to scratch uh, as you as you get into it. And you can see pretty clearly that there's a, a drop down arrow here and I can change this to be something different. And what I'm looking to change it to is I'm changing it to uh, the number one. So I've got to scroll down quite a bit to find it. So when one, key is pressed. So when the one key is pressed, this code is going to run. And now what I want to do is I want to uh, ultimately draw things. Now two commands that I want to just kind of show you here before we dive in are pen up and pen down. And so when you're drawing things, you sometimes want to um, like warp there without drawing. And sometimes you want to put the pen down and actually do some drawing, right? And so for this first chimney, who knows where the turtle's going to be and who knows what angle the turtle's going to be out? Because after he finished his last job, he could be anywhere. So the first thing that we actually want to do is we want to have the pin be up and we want to get him to this little starting spot right here at the tip of the L. And then once he's there and pointing the correct direction, then we'll put the pin down and we'll start actually drawing with him. So go ahead and drag over that pin up and connect it the way I have. And then if you want to go ahead and have the pen down uh, ready to go somewhere in here, we're going to need it in just a moment. So what I want to do is I want to work from wherever I'm at uh, to there. That's probably going to be a motion command. And so there's a hint uh, in here because we start off with a few more hints and then we get less and less of the hints. Uh, and it says start at 5090. Uh, and so uh, what I want is I want the motion command that has this go to x, y, and I'll plop it on there. Now, just to kind of tell you about this command and how it works is it picks these crazy numbers for me. Your numbers will be different. The reason my numbers are what they are is because that's where the turtle's at right now. So my turtle completely randomly is at x of negative 141. And we'll probably have to talk about the grid system some, uh, but the x goes left and right. Uh, it's shown as the orange axis here. And you can see that my turtle is at negative 141, which is about here. This is his midpoint, 141. And then his Y is at around negative 100. And sure enough, if I come down, uh, Y goes up and down. Uh, if I come down to negative 100, his midpoint is right near negative 100. So wherever your turtle is, see if it makes sense uh, why you got the numbers you did. I don't care what those numbers are. I'm just going to type in 50 and 90. The other thing that I want to do, which is going to seem like overkill now, is I'm going to make sure that he's pointing to the right. Um, and so I'm going to grab this point in direction. So it's this next command here. And I'm going to snap it on to the bottom. Now, 90 is a little confusing. I actually find the number uh, confusing. But if you click on the 90 itself, it actually just shows you an arrow. <laughs> so 90 is that way, right? It turns out that in their system, 0 is up. Um, negative 90 is to the left and then 180 is down. I'm not worried about that. I just want the default, which is 90, uh, which would be great. Um, and For then those I, of you that might have heard of circles and degrees, that's the units of this 90. Um, there's 360 degrees in a circle. And so as you saw Dave traversing that number, uh, it went forward to 90 when he was pointing down, it had gotten to 180 or very quickly to negative 180, depending on which side he approached it from. And then it went back around to negative 90 and zero. We recognize that if you're in the younger group, you may not have familiarity with negative numbers yet. Um, but if you've heard of circles and heard of degrees, I know uh, my kids sometimes when they were younger, they would try to jump up and turn all the way around. Uh, they would 
call it doing a 360. That's trying to traverse all 360 degrees uh, before they land. Um, they, they started with 180s, just turning backwards in a single jump. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Yeah, there's um, coding has this natural synergy with uh, art and math, and we just can't help but saying a couple things. All right, I'm going to snap on this pin down, and then I'm going to try my code. So to try my code, I actually need to press uh, the number one key, and what should happen is my turtle should, should warp to that spot. So it doesn't matter where he's at. Uh, it doesn't matter what angle he's at. If I press the number one key, he goes to that spot right there. And you can see that I even put the pin down. He's like ready to draw, right? Like he's ready to go. Um, and so actually you can see he made the smallest of little dots uh, already, which is interesting. By the way, if I hit the space key, so I have to make sure I'm, I click on like this wide area, then I hit space key, it should actually erase that little dot uh, that it made, which is kind of nice. All right, now uh, what I want to do here is it says that I want to move 10. So I'm just going to take a move 10 command. It's the very first command. Plop it on here. Rotate 90. So I said rotate 90. I should have probably said rotate 90 degrees. And so you can imagine that he's walking these 10 uh, and then he's turning uh, 90 degrees. I consider that kind of a left turn. Uh, but you could also call it what? It's a counterclockwise turn. It takes a little while. Turn. Yeah. yeah. In fact, before Dave clicks on this, this is a great opportunity to pause because I want you thinking ahead as to what might be the next uh, command. He's already. No, I was going to give you the two options. options here, right? So we've got <laughs> turn one direction and turn the other direction. Um, take a moment, pause, see if you can figure out which one he's going to slide in next. Um, and the thing is, is you can even try both and see which one works. Uh, you can you can try one and, and see. That's part of coding is trial and error. Um, but yeah, go ahead, Dave. Cool. Reveal yeah. the answer. They paused. Right. They thought about it. Yeah. So we know that we're gonna move ten, and then we're gonna turn one way or another, and then we're gonna move thirty more. And so I think that if I'm going this way, and then I want to turn to where I'm facing up, I want this one right here. And then I'm going to throw this one uh, in the trash can. And if you pick the other one and you tried it, you would have totally seen that it went the wrong way, right? Uh, which would be fine. It turns out that I am going to do most of this project uh, with these counterclockwise turns. All right, so if I go ahead and run it, I almost hit the green flag to run it, but I run this by hitting the number one key. Uh, you can see that it makes a uh, blue line. Uh, if you wanted to run it again, you have to hit space to get rid of it. And then if you hit one again, uh, you can see that it draws it again. And Great. You'll notice that Dave's dragging the turtle out of the way to see it. This is also an opportunity to click the uh, stop show button down at the bottom that he showed you at the beginning. If you want to toggle that and get rid of the turtle because it's blocking what it just drew and you want to see if it's perfect. Um, and then you can reveal the turtle again because it's always fun to watch our little construction turtle do the drawing. Yep. And I, I totally agree. Eventually, I'm going to just hide him and get him out of the way, but uh, I'll leave him on there for just a little while longer. Uh, the next thing I want to do, uh, so we've actually finished step number one, but what I would like to do is right now, it's always drawing it blue uh, for me. Um, and it's blue just because, I don't know, that's some type of built-in default. Um, I would actually like to be able to change to my own colors. So I'm going to show you uh, just a couple, and then you can add as many colors as you want. I'm going to figure out how to change it to red. So uh, I'm going to click on events. And I think what I'd like to do is when I press R, that makes sense to me for R to be red. So I'm going to drag this um, when space key pressed over here and I'm going to switch it to R. Um, and then I want to change the color to be the red color. Well, that's in the pen area. So I go back to the pen area and I say set pen color to right here. And uh, the way this works is you actually, it's purely graphical. You click on this little color thing here and it brings up this little color chooser. I have mixed feelings about this color chooser for, for younger audiences. It uses what's called um, color saturation brightness. Usually I just want to crank up the brightness and crank up the saturation. And then it basically just works like a rainbow after that. So I can have a, a red color here. Now if I hit R and then a one, the R didn't do anything, but the you can see that then it painted it uh, in red. So I've got space to clear it. Uh, I hit uh, one now. You can see it just is set to red. So make some colors for yourself. So I'm going to make, um, I don't know, maybe I'll make a G. Um, obviously, I'm thinking of green. 
and your shades don't have to be the same as my shades. You can do whatever you want, right? I'm going to pick a green right there. I guess I think I will make it a darker green. It feels like a good green to me. Uh, and then maybe I'll add one more. Maybe I'll add blue. So uh, add as can many. I, can I jump in on yeah. one idea really quick? Dive in. Uh, do me a favor and take that when depressed to trash. Just pretend like we didn't do this yet. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. You know, I mentioned that uh, there's a lot of coding sequences that you can do that are kind of shortcuts. Control Z was a good thing to know to undo. There's also a way to copy and paste. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, that in other programs. Uh, control C, Control V. I actually saw a, a fun a pair of t-shirts once where a father was wearing a Control C and the, the kid was wearing a Control V. I thought that was kind of cute. But what you'll notice Dave doing, he just clicked on the when G is pressed up at the top and it kind of did like a little movement and, and flashing. That's now in the computer's zone. Right? That's what the focus of the computer is on. If you then press Control C, it's going to store it as a copy. Yeah, so I'm, gonna then, do, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a bad job of example. So I selected no, it first, okay. yeah. and then I hit Control C. Nothing happens when I hit Control C. Now go ahead, Bob. And now he's going to go move his mouse somewhere else. He's going to click there, or he'll just type and hit Control V, and it's going to paste exactly what he copied. And so now he can move that, and programmers do this all the time. Uh, if you've written or typed like 10 lines of code, but you want to get most of it and just change a few things, they'll copy and paste. And so what he's been able to just do in, in the 10 seconds that I said that sentence is copy and paste that when G is pressed, change to green, and just drag down the G and change it to a B, change the green to a blue. Now he's setting the the, the letter to P, and I'm assuming that's a uh, it's it's pink or purple. It's 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 pink, pinkish purple. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so copy and paste is a programmer's friend, and it's something that is available to you even here in, in a block coding world. Yeah, that pink is, is terrible. I'm going to have to work on getting myself a better <laughs> pink. Problem is I don't know how to make pink instead of red, but that's okay. There you go. All right, so I think that uh, getting the colors was important to me, but I think that uh, you know how to do it, and you can make as many colors as you want. I think what I'm most interested in is moving on to the next uh, number. We've got six of them total. And the way these uh, backdrops work is, if you remember this code up here, this N is the next backdrop, we've kind of finished with, with step number one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click into the white area, and I'm going to hit the N. And so now I'm ready for step number two. And so step number two shows you an outline, a rough outline that you're supposed to kind of sort of get it close to. It does not have to be perfect. Um, and it also gives you potentially a couple hints. I'm going to warn you now that the hints are beginning to become less and less and less uh, as we go through this. Uh, so let's just kind of uh, go through uh, and start doing this. Just like Bob alluded to, uh, when you start the next one, you could make a copy of the previous one because there's going to be some similarities, or you could just make it again. I think this time, just because we're still pretty new, I'm going to make it again, but I'm going to kind of keep the other one up here as a wreck is what I'm going to choose to do. So you can see that the first thing is, is that I want an event. Uh, and this event is going to be for the key two. So I scroll down here to key two. The first part of all these is to zoom there. So while you're zooming, you want to do a uh, pen up. And this hint does kind of sort of tell me uh, where I'm going to need to zoom to, which is very nice of it. It says to zoom to these coordinates. Now uh, that's going to be in motion, and it's going to be this go to x, y. Now we told you the coordinates this time, and it might be the last time we tell you, uh, because we want you to try to figure some of these things out, uh, like on your own, right? And if you look at this grid, you can actually see that the x direction is here, um, and this starting spot, it's something that's near 100 but less than 100. And probably when you guess what it is, you're not going to guess perfect. Uh, but let's say you guessed, oh, that looks like negative 90, right? And then when you ran it, you'd see it's a little off, and then you'd tweak it. And that's kind of one of the goals of this assignment, is to see it's a little off and to tweak it, to figure out how to tweak it and get it better. Um, but we told you this time, it's just uh, negative 80. Um, and then the Y uh, says negative 160, but we can see if we're coming down here, there's negative 100. The very bottom would be negative 180, and so not quite negative 180. It's negative 160. And depending on your grade level, uh, you might 
uh, need a parent's help, uh, or, or you might be able to just make it happen. And then all of these start uh, with point and direction 90, so that part's the same. And you can see how similar uh, the structure, at least in this first part, is to what the number one did. And that pattern will, will help you as you go. Now, what we draw is going to be very different, right? So what we drew last time was just pin mark, single turn, pin mark. Now, what we're doing here is a square. Now, a square, so if I were to hit the number two right now, our turtle's going to go over here. He's ready to draw. There's two ways you can do this. You could, you know, draw. Uh, I'm just kind of demoing here. And then turn. And then draw. And then turn. Um, and you kind of been seeing where I'm going like this. You would draw and then turn, draw and then turn, draw and then turn. So that would be four draws uh, and four turns that are all kind of basically the same thing. Bob, any guesses as to what we're going to do instead? Well, you used the phrase up in the hint. You said use a oh, loop. Darn it. I already said it in the hint. I shouldn't have put that in the hint. No, <laughs> this right. is the beginning video. We that's true. Hint. That's true. All right. We're going to use a loop. And uh, as Dave will show you under control, I believe, you'll find a whole number of options of ways that you can do things more than once. Again, that's another standard classic programming tool because oftentimes programming is repetitive. In fact, programming was created to do mundane or boring tasks that people didn't want to do anymore or that people often made mistakes at. And so having the ability to tell a computer to do something repetitively uh, is a very key feature. So Dave's going to share with us how to do something four times through the repeat command. Cool. And so before we learned about the forever command, that is not what we want here. We want to do it a fixed number of times. Yeah, so sure enough, we want this repeat. Uh, and you can see that it defaults to repeat 10, uh, but this is a square, so we want a repeat four. And so if we're going to repeat this four times, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do the move uh, which we've just told you the number here is 160, so I'm going to go to motion. And then I'm going to bring in uh, move, and I'm going to switch it to 160. We told you the number in the hint this time, but in the future we're going to stop telling you. But if we move from negative 180, or sorry, negative 80 to positive 80, so negative 80 to positive 80, the difference is 80 plus 80 which is 160, so that's why it's 160. And then I'm gonna be really fancy. Um, next is the turn. So you gotta figure out which turn you want. If you wanna pause it for a minute, think about that. Uh, that's great. Uh, I'm gonna tell you it's this turn that you want. And then uh, the next thing I've gotta do is I've gotta decide how much to turn. Now you may know um, how much uh, a turn, like a, a right angle turn is. It's 90 degrees and you might just type in 90 degrees. Um, I'm going to do something that's going to turn out to, to have value later. Instead of typing in 90, how did you get 90? How do you know it's 90? And so the idea is, is you're doing these turns, um, and then eventually you get right back to where you started. And so if you do four 90 degree turns, that does a complete circle, which is 360. And so what I'm going to do is instead of typing in 90, I'm going to actually go to operators. And if you go into operators, you can see there's things like plus, minus, multiplication, divide is what I want here. So I'm going to drop in a divide. And uh, I admit that it's harder for this time, but you're going to see the value as we get to the later ones. And I'm actually just going to type in 360, which is the number of degrees in a circle total, divided by 4. So 360 divided by 4 is 90, so I could have just typed in 90, it would have been the same, but observing this pattern is going to help me later. So I think that this code should hopefully be perfect. Um, honestly, if you were doing it by yourself, you probably wouldn't make it perfect right out of the box. You would, you would make it do something crazy, and then you would figure out what the bugs were, and then you would fix it from there. All right, so if I hit uh, the number 2, uh, you can see, oh, it's doing my terrible pink color. Sorry I ever made that. I'm going to switch it to B and then hit 2 uh, and switched it to blue, which is good. And so if you've got something wrong with yours, uh, let's say this like 80 was uh, accidentally typed in the wrong number, uh, you would see it would draw a, a crazy box somewhere else, right? So um, that happened very fast, Dave. Could you put in a weight 
And so find yeah. some way to delay this so that they, if you guys want to watch this drawing happen, uh, there's a way that you can put in this wait command before each of those loops are done. So you can watch it draw each part and really get a better idea. Because right now, as Dave's doing this, um, you know, he, he clicks the two and it just drew the box. And it was all happening very fast. Um, he's pressing two one time now, and now his hands are off of it. This is just going through a series of those loops, doing each of the move, wait, turn, wait. And you can now watch the turtle if he presses it again with red. You can watch the turtle go through each of those steps, moving, then turning, moving, then turning, and now the turtle's completed the four, the four steps. Yeah, it's kind of neat, isn't it? So, um, yeah, we could have done a better job with uh, with showing those. It's just a matter of whether uh, you like them in there or not. Uh, maybe I could make them still in there, but really fast or something. I don't know. I'm impatient, so I have to uh, have to get it done fast, right? <laughs> All right, so uh, at this step, uh, we've got step number two complete. Uh, there's only six total, uh, so we're actually doing pretty good. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, hit the N key, N, and it's going to show us, uh, and then I'm going to hit space to clear off anything I've drawn. Um, and so our next goal is to draw the roof. And by the way, this this code is still here. It, it's building, right? So, like, I mean, I could still totally hit one and two, um, and it draws those early things just fine. And so now what we're trying to do is we're trying to draw the roof. And so uh, what I'm going to do this time, just because it's different, is I'm going to copy this other one, um, and then I'm going to give you a little bit of time. You're going to have to pause the video uh, and see about making it yourself. So we talked about copying where like you select it and you hit Control C, Control V. You can also just right click. So if I right click on like the word win here, and there's actually this duplicate uh, that you can use as well. And so you can duplicate that over. And so what I want you to do is uh, figure out what needs to change for this. So obviously the two is going to change to a three. The starting point is going to change. We did not tell you where the starting point is. You're just going to have to figure it out from the drawing. Um, then this is drawing a triangle. So it's this roof up here, this triangle that we're doing. So you're going to have to figure out how to draw a triangle. You're going to have to figure out how long each side is. Um, you would normally have to figure out what the angle is, but we told you in the hint that it's 120. I don't want you to use that 120 though anyway. I want, I've got a better system here with my division. So what I'd like for you to do is, is pause the video and see if you can do it yourself. Did you pause it? Bob, do you think they paused it? Maybe. All right. So, all right, hopefully you've unpaused it now uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna go through it with you, right? So, welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> hopefully, it's been you, a good hour, I'm ho sure. hopefully you knocked it out. So uh, I'm going to switch the uh, two to a three. That was the first thing that had to change. Um, I'm going to switch the, instead of starting down here at negative 80 in the X, I'm going to look at my drawing. And I want to start right at this corner is where I'm really hoping to start. And this corner, well, I can see the number negative 100 here. This is orange. So this is actually my X is negative 100. And then my Y, uh, well, my Y, this line is actually the middle of the screen. So my Y is actually zero. Um, and so maybe you picked up on that right away. Maybe you knocked it right out. Uh, or maybe it's not clicking with you yet. Hey, I'm going to warn you now. Some of our later ones uh, are not nice, clean numbers. Uh, they're just kind of crazy things. And just do the best you can on some of the later ones. But this one's right at negative uh, 100 in the X, zero in the Y. And then um, I'm going to intentionally make a mistake in here. So when I intentionally do it, don't don't freak out. But I'm going to change it to a triangle. Uh, and so I know a triangle has three sides. So I'm going to change it to the repeat three. And then I'm going to run it. Uh, obviously, it's not going to work yet. But I just every time I've done something so far, it's been like perfect. Uh, but if I were to run this now and hit three, uh, you would see that it would do that, right? Um, and you can pretty quickly see that I've got a couple bugs uh, in my code. Uh, the first bug is that my angle is still a 90 degree angle. So you can see I'm doing 90 degree angles. Um, and so what I also need to change is I need to change this 360 divided by 4. So 4 was because it was a circle. Now I want to do 360 divided by 3 because it's a triangle. Um, I've still got more bugs, but I'm going to go ahead and try it again. So if I hit 3 right now, uh, you can see that it it drew a very good triangle, uh, which was awesome. I think I'm going to hide my turtle uh, at this point. 
So you can see it drew a very good triangle, but it was too small. Um, and the reason it was too small is because it did 160, but that wasn't enough. And so, you know, maybe you can look at the figure and maybe you can see what it is, but it's also totally acceptable just to type in 180, hit space to clear the old one off, hit three, to draw it again. And you can see that it's, uh, it's, it's quite a bit closer now. So it's like, well, that's not quite right. I hit space um, and then I try 200. This is what's called guess and check. Um, guess and check, there you go, 200, we're fine. Um, guess and check is perfectly acceptable for our, our level of coding, right? Eventually you wanna to get to where you're doing things more elegantly and you're thinking about the fact like, oh, if I, if I start at negative 100 and I'm going to positive 100, well, of course it needs to be 200, right? So I can just tell that. Um, and also, by the way, if you wanted to take out these delays, you could. Um, again, you take them out and you drop them over here. It's kind of annoying to take things out of the middle because you have to kind of like take it out and it takes out too much. And then so you kind of like break it apart. Uh, you'll get better at it once you, uh, I can describe to you all day long how I did that, but it's better if you just play with it some. And so that will do the exact same thing. I'll just do it in turbo mode. Any comments about triangles, Dr. Bob? No, I, I think you did a great job. And I think this is a perfect example of things that you can kind of think about is using the model of a previous shape to kind of think about what that next shape is. Um, you know, when you had that square, you knew it had four sides. Um, when you thought about that example, I mentioned about my kids jumping and doing a, a 180 turn, you could think about half of that being 90. Uh, triangles start to get into a little bit harder math, I guess, if you're uh, if you're younger, 360 divided by 3, maybe not necessarily obvious, but knowing that it had three turns and knowing that Dave set up that operator in there uh, might give you a hint thinking ahead as we go forward in terms of uh, how the number of sides of our shape is going to relate to uh, the way that we calculate that angle. Cool. Thanks, Bob. All right. So we're, we're moving right along. Uh, halfway done. Uh, so click into the wide area. Hit the N key and you can see the, the next challenge. Uh, the next challenge is to draw the door, which is a rectangle, not a triangle. Uh, and so, sorry, not a rectangle, not a square is what I meant to say. Um, and you can see that it's a, kind of some weird, crazy uh, points. And so uh, what I would recommend you do is I actually kind of recommend you duplicate the three um, and you start changing it uh, to the four. Um, and I want to give you some time to work on this. I've done this live with people and I, I usually give people quite a bit of time to work. Um, and so we're going to have you uh, pause the video again uh, and see how you do. Uh, and then you're going to come back and join us and we'll, we'll, we'll show you our solution to it. Go ahead and pause it. We said pause it. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let's go ahead and solve this with you. Uh, so the first thing is trying to figure out where we start at. Uh, and so if we look at our turtle here, uh, and we try to like just get him to go to that corner. Um, then we've got to try to, to guess what those numbers are. So if I was looking at it, I would say that the X is somewhere in the negative range. Uh, I don't really know, maybe negative 30. Uh, I'm just kind of like shooting over there. And then the Y, if you look closely, this Y is actually the same spot as this line before. Uh, and so it looks like that Y was negative 160 if I look at my other code. So don't have to think about it. I can easily cheat. And so if I do those two things and I hit the four key, uh, he should go to roughly that spot. Now in my notes, I happen to know uh, that it's not uh, negative 30. It's actually negative 25, but it, it just doesn't matter, right? All right, so he's going to start there. I'm going to hide him again. I'm going to put this other code back on. And so what he's going to do is he's going to start off pointing to the right. Now, uh, we've got a, a problem here. So if we tried to just change this to be four and just tried to change that to be four, uh, and we made it shorter, so if it starts at negative 25 and it goes to positive 25, that'd be 50 long. So if I tried to run it just like that, uh, I would get a square. It's kind of hard to see there. It's a little better. Maybe I'll put it in red. Um, and so the problem is, is that a door is not a polygon, right? So it's not, it's not four equal sides. So this trick of, of just this nice clean repeat and turn that didn't work uh, for this one. So uh, we're going to have to do something different. Uh, there's two options. Uh, there's two options for this. One option is, uh, to do no loops, right? So in fact, I don't even have to, I guess there's no problem with that. Um, one option is no loops. You just like do um, 
all the moves, right? So it goes, there's a short side, which is like a 50, uh, and then a long side, which I'll just guess is 100. I think it is, a, in fact, 100. Um, so, and then after that, it's another 50, and then after that, it finishes with a 100. All right, so I'm going to try that. So I'm going to hit space to clear it off, and then I'm going to hit number four for this. Uh, and it looks pretty good. Bob, you got any plans how we can do it better? So I actually wanted to back up for one second and mm -hmm. see if you could just show them, because I know a lot of the kids are probably figuring out, you know, how did they trial and error this? You knew the answer. Could you just show them, like, if they guess wrong, negative 25, what that process looks like? You know, if you had guessed negative 30 like you originally yeah. had, uh, and say, you know, maybe incorrectly guess that this was going to be 50 instead of, uh, instead of 50, it'd be 60 steps wide. Um, so you know, to make it symmetric, what that would look like. Uh, and, and this is quite common. Whenever you're doing coding or any problem solving, uh, in computer science, engineering, et cetera, uh, there's a lot of trial and error. There's a lot of iteration. Uh, I call it productive failure. You know, you, you make a mistake and then you, uh, you reflect on it and you figure out what you can do to improve and then you, you try to make it better. And I don't think that there's a, a clean way to zoom on this, but you can kind of tell that you can see a little bit of that purple. Um, yeah, there you go. You can see a little bit of that purple inside. So it's a little off. Yeah. Um, and, and so, so Dave knows from the way that this was designed at the beginning that this started at negative 25 and was 50 wide. It's kind of how we created that background. Um, but when you're doing it, maybe you came up with negative 27 and went 54 and it looks good enough for you. That's great. Yeah. And I, honestly, like if I had done negative 30 and done 60 to make it symmetric, I would have called that just fine, right? Um, it wasn't not, bad. I mean, if it misses by too much, like let's say I had done 120 for the height, you might be able to see that, right? Like you can see that, yeah. that that's not quite right. Uh, so I'd probably fix that. Um, but yeah, that's a really good point. And that really, um, we love for people to just play uh, and tweak it. And that's something that we're going to really um, focus on on the on the next two, right, is, is doing that. All right, so now to that answer we... your question, though, Dave, yeah. I, I do see an area where we can get a little bit more efficient. In fact, when you were just changing that 100, uh, you changed it to 120 and then back. You had to change it in two spots. Yeah. And, and so uh, th there's a duplication here. The first four are identical to the last four. Yeah. And if you turn that into a repeat that you do twice, now if you ever decide you want to make a change, you only have to change it in one spot. So... Yeah, it's exactly so in, in code this happens all the time. If you find yourself doing the exact same thing like multiple time, like that should be a loop, right? Um now you can drop this loop if you're really good uh at dropping loops, you can actually drop it to where it grabs the right things. That or you can just drop it to the bottom and then bring them out. I'm gonna try to drop it where it grabs the right things. And so if I do if I do those four things, short turn, long turn, um, I can actually just repeat them. Uh, and just trash this one. And that's a little bit better because that way when I'm changing things, I've got fewer places to change them in. All right, I'm going to review everything. So number one, did the chimney. Two, did the uh, the box. Three, did the roof. And then I'm going to change to the color green for this new one that we just did, uh, which was the door. Neat. All right, so the next things we're going to do, uh, I'll try to show you what we're going to do without showing you solutions. Uh, ah, solutions right there. Ah, more solutions. Um, so the next things we're going to do is number five, uh, which is going to draw a chimney, uh, sorry, a window. Uh, and then number six is going to draw a little door handle. Uh, so I'll switch it to red here and I'll fill in the other things that we're going to be doing. Uh, so we've already done the things in red. Uh, we're going to do the window at the top next and then the doorknob after that. So to, uh, to start the next thing, uh, what I like to do is I like to hit the N key, uh, which takes me to step five. I'll hit the space bar, which kind of gets rid of all the other things. So we're we're making this window, which you can see if you look close in the background. I didn't make perfect either, um, and I don't uh, expect you to uh, to have to make it perfect either. Now I'm going to start by duplicating uh, some of my other code. To be honest, uh, I think that I'm going to go back and duplicate the triangle again, um, just because it's uh, this one is a regular polygon, uh, and so I could duplicate the triangle. Uh, or I could duplicate the square. The square has these time delays in it, though. Uh, I think that I'll actually duplicate uh, the number three, plop it over here. And I'm guessing you know what's coming next. Uh, go ahead and change it to five, uh, and then pause the video uh, and give it a shot. 
So your goal is to figure out where approximately that point is. This one is not necessarily perfect, uh, so get it close. Um, <laughs> if it covers up the purple, it's, it's good enough, right? Uh, and then figure out how long you think that each side is, uh, and then see if you can make uh, the polygon kind of come together. All right, pause the video. All right, we're assuming you paused the video. We're assuming you did it, uh, and we're assuming that uh, that we can just kind of check it out. Uh, just because I I know the solutions, I've got them written down, but I don't want to like uh, that's not how you did it. The way that I uh, can do it is I can actually here's another trick you can use. You can put the turtle uh, at roughly that spot. So I want this spot right here, this corner. And so if I figure out like, wait, where is the middle of the turtle? I put him right there. You can actually use these to kind of guess and cheat. Uh, and so this says that the turtle is at negative 22 in the X. I'm copying that number from there. And 32 uh, in the Y. Now, it turns out that we always pick nice round things. So I think that mine, I'll pick 20 and 30. That seems like a pretty good thing. Um, and then if you look closely, uh, you can see that the length of this side uh, makes its first turn right at the zero. So this this number here actually would tell you the the edge length as well. Uh, and so this thing is going to be uh, 20 steps. Now I'm doing it correctly again. Um, and then the number of turns, there's eight turns. Um, and then I need to change that eight also shows up down here in the degrees. By the way, this is uh, this is complete overkill. Uh, but you could make variables for like number of sides, and you like you could set number of sides equal to that, and then you would only have to change it one place. But uh, not 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 worried about that. All right, let's uh, let's give mine a go. I'm going to put it in red uh, and hit the number five, uh, and then I'm going to hide my turtle. Uh, and to me, that looks good enough. Um, if you like, we're really picky. Yeah, I agree. It looks like it could probably come down a couple pixels. Um, and it looks like it could probably go back a pixel or two. Not that worried about it, right? So, all right, maybe that was a pixel too many. So if you wanted to get it right on there, that can be a fun little game. Oops, wrong button. Uh, but it does not have to be perfect. I think that that looks uh, good enough. Really, uh, what you can do is you can make your uh, your pin thicker, right? So instead of setting the pin size to five, I can set the pin size to like hmm, seven. <laughs> um, and so whenever I do it now, now it'll cover it up. All right, good enough. All right, everything look okay, Bob? Anything you uh, you're thinking that we would like to share about the uh, the window polygon? No, it looks great to me. I came up with the same similar numbers. I think I did negative 21, 29. It looks close enough to me. And as you stated, I think the, the drawing that we did in the background uh, <laughs> may not have been it's not. exactly constructed as, <laughs> as cleanly or as precisely as what we just did with code, right? Yeah. So if the template, uh, which is what you call kind of the background that you're trying to trace on, uh, was, was drawn without code, and then your code draws something that you know is is perfect angles. Uh, sometimes the the uh, copy becomes better than the original. Yeah, yeah the, just to share, I did just draw these, right? So literally, I was just in the drawing tool and I just drew them. So my drawing is not going to be perfect, uh, but your code uh, is is much more perfect, right? All right, back to uh, the turtle. Uh, we got one to knock out. Uh, hopefully, you can knock it out. I will encourage you to pause it, but we won't wait for as long uh, to pause it. But it is number six. Uh, if I hit the N key here, uh, you can see that it's a doorknob. The only thing I want to say about the doorknob is it looks like a circle, uh, because maybe I drew it as a circle. Um, but it's not actually a circle. It's actually just enough sides that you can't really see what it is. So I think that what I did is I actually made it a 36-sided object. Um, and I think that I made it uh, with a step size of one. So each one goes, goes one pixel and then turns 10 degrees. One pixel turns 10 degrees. Um, and I'll tell you what, I'll just kind of guess with you. What I want to find is I want to find essentially where the bottom of the circle is. Um, what I could do is I could put the turtle back on and just kind of guess. And it looks like it's probably around 12 in the X and somewhere around with negative 115 uh, in the Y. Now you could look at the grid and you can try to come up with those, but placing the turtle uh, may have worked better. All right, we'll see how I did this time if I hit a six. Looks good to me. 
Uh, I think in my notes, uh, yeah, I hit, I hit that right on. All right, so uh, I guess I didn't pause it at all there, uh, but you can see that that is the, uh, the the knob. That's how it goes sometimes when you're coding. So uh, let's kind of reflect on this a little bit. Uh, oh, we've got to go to our, our uh, final backdrop. Hit M one last time. So this is the uh, the final backdrop. Uh, I think that I didn't like it with a thickness of six. I liked five better. And uh, see if you can make your uh, your painting. Uh, so I'm going to go with a blue chimney. That's number one. A blue house. Uh, a red roof. And let's go with a green uh, door. And then I'll go with, uh, I'll stay with green for my window. And then back to blue for my uh, doorknob. Cool. Uh, so you can see that we built this up a little bit at a time. Uh, we added code to kind of show these different things. Uh, and the number of things you can do with code is is just insane. I admit this is not really a game. Uh, this is more of like a, a simulation. Oh, I didn't use my, my pink. Um, but you can see how that when you code, you break things into pieces. Uh, you definitely learn from uh, what you've done in the past. Uh, and hopefully there's a, a lot of cool things you can learn. Bob, you want to break it yeah. down for us a little more? Yeah, with, with this one, you know, I think we've, we've provided a, a template in terms of how to build a house, but hopefully we gave you the tools where you could decide how you could draw lots of other things. Um, obviously, with as, as Dave was describing, these polygons, these things that have a nice uh, symmetry. Symmetry is a, a fancy word for they look the same uh, on left and right or depending on how you rotate it. Um, so you could play with that and try to see if you could come up with other shapes. Um, you know, challenge yourself to come up with other designs and, and think of other things that you might want to draw that aren't a house, but can copy this code into a completely other program uh, to draw a car or draw a, uh, you know, a, a building. You know, you can think about things that are made up of shapes and, and kind of play with the code that we already have and, and create these little art based programs for uh, you or your your friends or family to play with. Yeah, pl playing is huge, right? So just uh, while Bob was um, was encouraging you to play it, like it inspired me to play. I thought it'd be fun. What if I um, what if I made a son for number seven, right? Mm -hmm. Just feels like I should have a son here. So I haven't practiced this at all. I just thought I'd see what would happen if I if I drew a little son, right? Um, and yeah, the the number of things that you can do are are just just insane with code, right? So like you can make spirals and yeah, won't even, won't even get into it, right? And um, if you make these shapes uh, different, uh, yeah, you can get, you can get all kinds of fun, fun little things. So let's, let's say that I didn't go 360 degrees around the circle, I went 340 and I did 200 of them. Um, you can just see what happens, right? You can just play with things, right? And so here's my, uh, my son. All right, 340 wasn't quite extreme enough, but you can just play with things and see see what happens, right? So let's see here, can I get, uh, yeah, that's good enough. Um, but you can just goof around uh, and, and do whatever you'd like. Um, so I'm gonna say seven degrees. Yeah, in fact, you could, uh, you could even think about what happens as you, um, if every step you kind of branched off and made a turn and drew and came back. You could give the little spokes on the sun. Yeah, you can do so you much. Know, sky, sky's the, <laughs> pardon the pun, sky's the limit uh, when, you're, when you're drawing uh, and, and when you're writing code. Um, so yeah, and, and the other thing I would encourage you to do, Dave uh, quickly mentioned variables. This is something we're gonna talk about in our next program. And uh, you can always go back and change code that you've previously written. You know, one of the things that Dave and I do a lot is we'll write a program uh, we won't think about it for a while, and then we'll come back a month later, two months later, and we'll look at the program and be like, oh, hmm, you know, there's probably a better way to do this, better way to do that, different ways to do this. Um, iteration is is great, and after you've thought about a problem and learned more skills, you can come back to this, uh, whether you're following along with the video or just doing it on your own, and probably come up with uh, many different ways that you could improve upon this with the, the skills that you'll learn as you go forward. Yeah, it's just what are you doing there, Dave? What's code is so fun. 
I, I, I was just thinking, wouldn't it be fun to actually make like a more complex shape as well? So like C uh -huh. is like, I, I don't want to actually do it, but wouldn't it be fun if like we just made a little car down here, right? <laughs> so we could just like go to negative uh, 200, negative uh, 140, uh, and you could draw like a, a wheel. Uh, oops, I don't want to duplicate the whole thing. Uh, and then you could go to a different spot. Um, maybe negative 160, uh, and you can draw another wheel, uh, and then you could go to a different spot, uh, and then draw a, a square, right? So, uh, so much fun that you can do. <laughs> All right. I won't, I won't make it pretty, uh, but I just kind of want to give you ideas for, for future things that you can try. All right. So that is, uh, not going to really work, but that's okay. All right, so my uh, my first attempt at a car is to draw a wheel, another wheel, and a box. Pretty good yeah. car, huh? So see if you can make a better car than that. <laughs> I'm guessing that you can. <laughs> wheel, wheel, and there's the car body, which was a little on the huge side. All right, we're done. Uh, we'll stop. Uh, we'll see you uh, for the next video. Uh, hopefully you've learned uh, more about sequential problem solving. You've learned about the color blocks in Scratch and breaking big problems down into smaller pieces. Happy coding. Bye.